Welcome to the Zono Sports Show, where you know Zonos. The NBA Finals were this weekend and definitely wasn't the epic battle that we anticipated. We all watched what we think. We thought it was going to be two juggernauts going head to head, but it looked like one. And that golden, that juggernaut, who was that? That happened to be Golden State. You had Chef Curry and KD doing their thing. Call Miss Cleo, call me Miss Cleo's grandbaby because I said Golden State would win games one and two, and I was right. And the Cavs actually lost by essentially 20 points. That's a dub for both games. Game one, KD was the Casanova on the court. 38 points, 8-8. Eight and eight. I mean, this man had a performance for the ages. And letting everybody know that, hey, wait a second. You guys are talking about he's the best player in the world, LeBron? But I'm out here on this court. I won an MVP, even though I gave it to my mom. I've done things in the league. I've won scoring titles. So who are you all to say that this man is better than me on this stage? I'm older, I'm younger, I'm faster, I've got more sauce at this point, and he's proved it. The dunks in the lane, because, I mean, all those dunks he had in game one down the lane where J.R. Smith would fade off and chase the three, Kevin Durant made them look silly, Cleveland. It parted like the Red Sea, the lane did the entire game, and he could get everywhere he wanted on the court. I really don't think that Cleveland was focused in games neither in, in neither games one or two. J.R. Smith, speaking of him, why are you playing so bad? I mean, you're not hitting threes, no defense. And what did I say in game in, in when we talked the other day on Thursday? I, t- I told you guys, I said, J.R. Smith, Kyle Korver, Channing Fry, they cannot lack. They cannot slack. They can't just become footnotes in this NBA Finals. The others, these guys, they had to show some mustard. And what did they do? They showed up short. J.R. Smith not having a great performance in the finals. Kyle Korver not hitting any threes. And Channing Fry, he's 35. He's starting to look old. So is Richard Jefferson. LeBron James, 28 points in game one and a triple double in game two, but it hasn't been enough. Where's he going to get the help? Where's he going to get it at? I mean, it's too late to acquire anybody. So at this point, you've got to trust your teammates. You know, I saw people on Facebook talking about, oh, Kevin Love, you know, they're worried about him. He's a defensive liability. At this point in the season, you kind of have to trust your teammates and rely on their abilities. And Kevin Love, he's played somewhat, I don't know, he's played okay at 27 last game. But Kyrie and Kevin Love, they they played way too small for me. I I just don't think they can have these cheese pizza games and say, you know what, well, this will be enough to help LeBron and, and our team get this win. That big three that they assembled, I'm looking at LeBron now and questioning his uh, his knowledge and his talents as a GM, because that's essentially what he's been this entire, this entire well, excuse me, for the duration of the past four or five or six or seven years when he named off, I want to win not one, not two, not three. Well, LeBron, you've only got three, and it doesn't look like you're going to get four because the help on your team, it's stagnant. Shumpert, Shumpert needs to go ahead and get traded because he comes and hits the fluky three. He can play a little bit of defense, but... Golden State's not worried about this man. What have they done effectively most? They've kept Tristan Thompson off the boards. He killed them on the offensive boards and defensive boards last finals. And they've made sure, okay, we're going to treat you like a baller. Like you can step out and shoot it, shoot from three. They've been doubling him on, on offensive rebounds on the boards. Defense, they're, they're, they're hedging him, making sure that he can't make an impact. Because, yeah, he's an emotional guy. He gets the Cavs revved up. But if you take him and neutralize him and take him out of the game, what can the Cavs really do as far as second chance point, second chance opportunities to score? And a guy that we said can't wear his his Harry Potter invisible cloak, that man who's in the kitchen that they call Oracle Arena. Chef Curry had a new pot in these finals. Yes, we know that last two he's been kind of he's been kind of shaky. Hasn't been the guy that we've seen the unanimous MVP of sorts. 28 and 32 points in both games. Also a triple-double this past game in Game 2. He is atoning for the two past two finals where he hasn't been outstanding. <clears throat> we know Andre Iguodala won MVP in the first one in 2015, and we know his second finals last year. Of course, they lost, and LeBron took home that MVP. Now, if you need a home appliance, grab Steph Curry because he put LeBron in the blender. Did you guys see the highlight? Did you... 
Steph Curry is primed and ready to embarrass LeBron in this finals, if he can. Now, he can only do so much because, what, he's only 6'3", LeBron's uh, 6'8", towering over him, big guy. But he showed you with that skill and those handles. Now, they say it was a double dribble. You know what I call anybody that calls a double dribble? A hater. Because in NBA basketball, it's just guys who would play street ball, but they have much more talent, so they're playing on a grand stage in front of millions and thousands of people in the arena. So, I mean, you could call traveling... Caring, you could call any of that stuff anytime you wanted if you if you wanted to. So that's that's subjective. That's on the refs. That's why they have referees. And if the refs ain't calling it, then we can't get mad. So you can't hate. I mean, those little calls are not affecting those threes from way back going in. And Chef Curry and KD may be one of the best duos that we've ever seen in NBA history. KD has forced the keys to the league out of LeBron's briefcase and right back into his pocket. Paul Pierce said KD the other night, was the best in the world. Now, people are hating on Paul Pierce. Oh, he hasn't been in the media that long. He shouldn't say anything like that. He was right. Why are we going to knock it? More points and impact in both of these games this finals KD has had over LeBron. And use your pupils on this assessment. That means use your eyes. Look at what you see. And they say in football, the eyes don't lie, and the eye in the sky don't lie. And there's a million eyes in the sky it's called television sets, and you can watch those games and see that Kevin Durant is playing with a lot more juice, like he's got something to, to prove, and he's simply better right now. And I think LeBron is still a great player. He's got a, a few, a, a lot more years left, at least five, I'd say. And, I mean, that's all good and dandy. However, KD is the creme de la creme at this point in his career. He's been playing in the league 10 years. He's only 28. He will be around for a few more years. And he's 7 foot. And he can shoot the ball the way he can shoot. LeBron wishes he could shoot that ball like that. He'll never be able to shoot the ball like KD. No more Jordan or Kobe comparisons about LeBron. LeBron James just lost two NBA Finals games back-to-back by almost 20 points. What was it, 23 and 19? LeBron James, I cannot compare you to these type of GOATs because... They, I guarantee, have never lost in NBA NBA Finals games back to back by almost twenty plus points. And I'm I'm not gonna attribute that to oh LeBron. He you know he's he he doesn't have all the yeah. We know LeBron needs some help. He's played okay, but Jordan or Kobe, they're gonna drop 40, 45, 50 if their team's struggling the way that they're struggling right now. LeBron, they've needed you. Cleveland has. To have one of those type of games and you haven't been able to deliver. So I'm not going to sit here and continue to compare you to Jordan anymore. Because once you lose this finals, what do you go? Three and five? Not very good. Stanley Cup, that was the other night. Meaning last night. And then the other night. Because the other night, I was in Nashville and it was so lit. I was right outside of Bridgestone Arena, and you could just feel the energy. Those Nashville fans, they're turned up. They're tossing catfishes all over the city, all on the ice, all over the city. Nashville tied up the series last night 2-2, and Pecorine, he's been legendary. Since the first two games, he gave up that five goals to, to Sidney Crosby and the boys in game two, but they got back to Nashville, and what did he do? Shutdown man stops 96% of shots since game two. And I want to say the Penguins have only scored one goal in each of those games, games games three and four. They scored one on Saturday, and then they scored another one last night. So Pekka Rene is playing legendary, and I really think he's a guy that could potentially bring that Stanley Cup back to Nashville. He's been playing awesome, and momentum has shifted clearly in the series. P.K. Subban guaranteed us and said, hey, we're going to go back home, win this game, da 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 People don't like P.K. Subban because they feel like he's arrogant. But P.K. Subban was right. I mean, the man told told us what he told us, and he did what he did. So, I mean, how can we knock somebody because they prognosticate the correct uh, prognostication and say, we're going to win these games? And what did they do? They tied up the series. Sid the Kid broke his 12-game Stanley Cup series streak without a goal, but he's got to do more. You're Sid the Kid. You're supposed to be the face of the NHL, star of the league. you got to ball out. And right now... Pittsburgh is in a bit of a pickle. They're going to go back home, but I think that we could see Nashville rattle off four straight games and this series be done in game six in Nashville. And also, college basketball-wise, I want to shout out to Thad Mata. Great coach for a long time at Ohio State. He retired as coach due to health issues. However, I must say, it was time for him to go anyway. The recruiting wasn't the same, and I mean, they just weren't winning games at Ohio State 
like they were when Mike Conley and Greg Oden had that team and like they were when they had Jared Selinger and the Evan Turners. They were not able to pull out those type of games, and their talent just hasn't been what it is. Mark Loving, okay, nice guy, great, but wasn't what they needed. Jay Sean Tate, great, but he didn't. He wasn't able to get it done. So I look at this entire thing and say, Thad Mata, great coach, but this was definitely, uh, I think, uh, the the best time for him to to leave because it would have just gotten worser and worser um, as time transpired and went on. It would just I think they would have lost more games next year and then they would have called for him to be fired. So I think this was appropriate. So best wishes to Thad Bata. Won't see him on that sideline red and fire anymore. But you know life goes on. That's the, that's the nature of college sports. Players have to move on. Sometimes coaches do too. Uh, NFL, welcome back Hank Williams to the Monday Night Party. They finally let him back after some comments he made about a Barack, Barack Obama and Joe Biden calling them the enemy because of their their association and in, in internal international affairs. Uh, but Hank Williams, I'm sure he learned from that experience. We all say crazy stuff. I'm glad to see this man back. I want to see him back up there dancing, give us a new song. And that is the man that we want to see when Monday Night Football comes on. I've been watching him since I was a kid. Ease up off my man Hank Williams. So welcome back, Hank. Big Bang Hank. Next show, I'll tell you why Golden State is about to sweep. Or maybe, but I did say they'd win game five. So just stay tuned. Keep watching the Zono Sports Show. And I'll have more juice for you the next time we come back. Thank you for watching the Zono Sports Show, where you know Zono's.